once again, Happy Christmas. I'm going to repeat this again and again during this Mass. And you're going to hear it over and over again after this Holy Mass. Happy Christmas, Happy Christmas. Now, can I ask you, why do you say this Happy Christmas? I sound foolish, right? It's Christmas, so we call it, we wish each other saying Happy Christmas. Okay, I understand it's Christmas. Yeah, Christ Mass. The Mass offered for Christ to celebrate his birth. But why do you say, why do you add this adjective, happy? Again, still, do I sound foolish? Why, Father, it's Christmas, and don't you see the people look at the choir, how beautifully they are dressed, and the beautiful decorations, and the glowing lights, and again, the good food and drinks. More than that, we get gifts either from Santa or from your loved ones, you get gifts. And we give gifts, we share gifts. And this is joy, this is happiness, right? But my dear friends, the choir will come in their ordinary dress code from next Sunday onwards. And these decorations will be removed and the crib will be taken off. Christmas will be over in one week's time. What will happen then? The joy, happiness is over. Oh yeah, Father, then we need to go for you know, kind of a, a picnic outing, go for dinners and meet our loved ones who can make us happy and make, earn some money and get into new projects and carry on and uh, do something more to be happy, is it? So endless effort to be happy. Why not, dear friends? be happy within forever. The Lord invites us in the scripture today to be happy with him. Isaiah tells Israelites who were doomed after the Syrian uh, devastation. They were taken into exile. Now they don't have any hope. And he gives them a hope saying, a savior will be born and you will be redeemed. A child born of a virgin will save you. Now, this is the happiness. This is the greatest gift that we receive for Christmas. We understand how joyful we are when we receive gifts, right? and it's a little more and uh, it sustains a little longer by giving gifts, especially when you give it to the poor and the needy, you feel good about it and it lasts a little longer than that joy that you have when you receive a gift. Fine, but it's all this for the moment, it's momentum. But receiving God into our hearts makes us happy forever. Now, dear friends, we might think, okay, this uh, receiving God into our hearts, uh, mm, that's for good people. Not, not for me, because I'm not worthy, I'm, I'm separated, I'm divorcee, I'm a gay, or I am kind of a condemned person, I'm rejected. No one wants me. I'm powerless. Or I'm a widow, I'm an orphan. We have our own stories of pain. Therefore, we think happiness is not for me. I need to go out, find some ways to make myself happy every day. Dear friends, please remember, if you feel that you are weak and if you are troubled, you are the one probably God would choose. Look at most of these biblical characters. They were the weak ones. Abraham, Moses, Joseph, Jacob. Moses was a murderer. Jacob was a cheater. And uh, Joseph was condemned by his own brothers. In this way, when Jesus was born to this world, Jesus was born or rather conceived out of the bedlock. And 
Joseph and Mary had their own doubts. And then again, those glowing words that Mary heard during the Annunciation has not come, have not come true at the birth of Jesus. Look at the reality. They didn't have even a place to give birth to this child. Like the poor, the poorest of the poor, they had to seek the assistance of someone to warm up, to give that warmer to their ba newborn baby in a manger with straws. Now, in this situation, what is happening to Mary and Joseph? Where is their gift of happiness? Their happiness is this newborn child. How? Faith. They believed in Jesus as the Savior. Look at the shepherds who were condemned as outcast. They are the stinking, smelly people. Some elites didn't want even to accept them as human beings. And they were the ones who were called to visit this newborn king. What did God expect from them and from Mary and Joseph? Faith. Angels went and told the shepherds, look, there's a baby born and kept wrapped in subling cloth and laid on a manger. Just go and have a look. Come on, a king, a savior, will he born and in a manger, in a cow shed? Who would believe that? But they believed. They searched for him and found this baby and they rejoiced. They went back singing songs. They were overjoyed. Happiness was theirs. Mary and Joseph were happy, happy forever. Why? They met Jesus. They had faith. They accepted the best gift, the greatest gift in their whole life. Jesus into their hearts. Now, dear friends, we are the same here. We are here for the same purpose, to see Jesus, our greatest gift, the best gift that we can have for Christmas. That's why we say Happy Christmas, as if we can't contain that happiness and joy within us. It outbursts and we go and meet everyone and say, Happy Christmas, Happy Christmas, Happy Christmas. I'm happy because Jesus is born in my heart. He's here with me. That's happiness. That's Happy Christmas. Not the food and decorations and the new clothes. Yes, they bring some joy, but not real happiness. Permanent happiness. And dear friends, when Jesus gives us himself as the gift to us and makes us happy, we have some decency to give him back a gift, right? We share our gifts in, during Christmas, don't we? We give you a gift and you give us a gift. And this is sharing, this is Christmas. What do we give to Jesus? St. Paul writes in the second reading, he invites us to have that faith, faith in return in Jesus. That's our gift to God for giving us his only begotten son to us. And that makes us happy again. Dear friends, St. Paul writes this beautifully. Give up everything, give up everything that does not lead us to God. That's what we need to do in faith. And also worldly ambitions. These are the ones that make us unhappy always. These worldly ambitions are like a carrot in front of us. We just run behind them and endlessly we are unhappy. And again, when God is not our whole purpose of life and when 
someone something takes us away from god we end up in our own little private hell in sadness what we need to do is as st paul writes give up anything anyone that takes you away from god and this worldly ambitions should not be the core of your life yes you need to have your career you need to have your money your wealth and your hobbies your marriage your children very good but that should not be the first place in your life therefore dear friends let's be happy forever while jesus being born in our hearts and let's burst out in that joy and happiness and wish everyone happy christmas because we are happy jesus is with us therefore happy christmas to all of you happy christmas